girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hot Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. I talk for an hour every week about cars. That's what I know. And uh, if you've got questions, of course, I've got answers. I'd like to keep you informed. I'd like to tell everybody what's going on in this in this car world. And right now, <laughs> we're upside down. Let's just face it. This whole world is, is upside down, and the car world is no exception. It's no exception. But there's some things that we can do and we need to do, and I'd like to see you guys get involved in. And that's let's take a minute and talk about vehicle hygiene. Yeah, I know. Vehicle hygiene sounds stupid, right? It used to. You think about it, it doesn't sound so stupid today. Not really a, no, it doesn't sound bad at all, does it, Eric? It's time to clean, you know. Now more than ever, a clean ride is very important and really not much effort on your part. Besides, even if you think it's a big effort, you really, really need to do it anyway. Come on. If not for you, the family. Come on. Everybody gets in the car. You get taken on plate. You got to go to the doctor. You got to go to pharmacy. You want to go to Blue Top. You got, you got people in the car. I say that all the time because that's what Sandy and I do. We go to the pharmacy and we go to Blue Top. <laughs> and that's all we do. I even had the groceries delivered. I don't I don't go out for much of anything, but I will go out for a big Ben burger. <laughs> now I know there's a huge shortage right now of sanitizers and, and wipes and all the good stuff. Any any little bottle sanitizers, any of the Clorox wipes, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Even bottles of alcohol and bleach. Well, I want to right stop you right there. I want to tell you, if you do have bleach, please don't use it on your car. Okay? It's not, it's not, uh, your car isn't bleach safe. It really isn't. You start wiping on the dashboard of the steering wheel, you're liable to come out with a plain white dashboard because <laughs> that's all dyed. You know, it's just, a, that's just the way it is. Wise words from a wise man. I'm telling you, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, you'll make streaks. You'll have a tie dyed dashboard if you go putting bleach on it, Eric. It'll look like something out of the 60s. Good old soap and water, done correctly, can do the same or a better job on the germs you need to kill. Just use your head. A mild detergent or dish soap in a pail of water, it doesn't take much, and a clean cloth. Be sure to wring out the rag so as not to soak the dashboard. We don't want all the electronics getting waterlogged, okay? You don't want to do that. And, uh, you, and Or in the dash, or the steering wheel now. The steering wheel has controls in it. You have to be careful with that. Just a damp, soapy rag. Clean off everything. Then you go and you get a hot rag with no soap. A hot, wet rag with no soap and rinse it out real good. Turn it, close it off, you know, draw, uh, wring it out and wipe everything off again. Now you've killed all the germs and you've got the soap residue off. No big deal. Didn't cost you much. I mean, what did you, what, a little time is what it cost you. And it's going to mean an awful lot, especially if you're not the only one that drives that car. If your wife drives it too or maybe one of the kids and they get in there and grab that steering wheel. You got to know it's clean. It's got to be clean, guys. And the dashboard and everything holds all kinds, and the leather seats, they hold all kinds of stuff. Now, if you don't have leather seats, you can spray them. Now, to restore the luster of the interior parts after you've done all this, because the soap will take the shine off of them, but it won't hurt the finish. You can use Armor All, any Armor All product available at your closest auto value dealer to shine it and protect it. That'll bring it'll bring it right back to normal. The thing about the Armor All is, and like most products, they're not disinfectant. They don't kill germs. You have to if you buy something, you have to read the label. All right. Now we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, the Armor All isn't a disinfectant, but it is a cleaner, and it is a shiner, and it will make things uh, bring it all back to especially leather. It'll bring leather right back where it belongs. It really does a nice job on it. And vinyl, some vinyl. I, I I don't have a problem with that. You don't go using it on your on your cloth seats. But how many people actually got cloth seats anymore? I haven't seen a cloth seat in ages. I mean, part some of it's part cloth. I don't know. I I actually haven't because now with the with the air condition and the heated seats, what's the difference? You can have leather all year round. You don't you don't have to worry about it being hot or cold. All right. Please never use any harsh cleaners on your dashboard or your interior parts. It's 
especially that bleach. I'm keeping tell I keep I can't tell you enough. I and I use bleach at home here. I clean my sinks and my countertops with it. I that's a bleach is a, a great disinfectant. But keep it out of the car because you'll ruin you'll absolutely ruin the finish on some of your interior parts. Even the wood grain it w will not take bleach. If you had someone in your car that tested positive later you're going to want to spray the HVAC ductwork. You also, your auto value store also has that stuff where you can spray the, uh, in the vents and stuff and clean that all off because it's in there. It <laughs> Also, if you find, oh, if you find the local auto value stores close the customers off the street because some are now, like in some municipalities, call me at my shop. 708-895-9520. I can order it. They'll be delivered to me. I can order it, and I can pick get it for you. I Don't go without cleaning your car because you can't get in the store. You can also call ahead, and I think they probably bring it out to you. But you can't go in the store. That's Some of them, not all of them, but some of them are getting that way. I'll get you what you need if you need it. That's not a problem. Some of the big box stores that are staffed by non-professional people, will sell you all kinds of cleaners. Ah, but re here we go again. Read the label. They do not sanitize. They don't kill any germs. That's not what they do. They're, <laughs> they're, not, they're not for the specific purpose of defeating the coronavirus, all right? They're not. You have to clean it. And let value re and let auto value restore it. If you can, if you if you can't shampoo the carpets or cloth seats, you can spray them with Lysol or the equivalent, and that won't harm them. That's if you have any spray. If not, you better get out the scrub brush and the soap, and gonna have to let it dry. Get a wet dry vac and get it, get it as dry as you can, and put some fan on it and get let it dry. You gotta you gotta clean it. You just you, your vehicle's just as bad as your workplace. Why clean the vehicle if you're the only one who gets in it? Well, what all, what all did you touch in between the driving today? Or your loved ones, what did they touch when they get in the car? You don't know what you touched. Doorknobs, handles, uh, oh, cripe. The, the grocery store, the cart, the cart handles. and You know, you've got to do this. You have to, you have to, you know what? This is not a big problem if you're paying attention. Rule number one. My old buddy Donnie used to tell me that. Rule number one, pay attention. And that's the name of the game. If you're thinking about this, if you're paying attention to this, it'll be good. You'll make it, and you'll keep from getting sick. I don't want to see anybody get sick. Nobody wants to see anybody get sick, all right? It's just not, that's not the where we're at. That's not, and you can do this if you'll just pay attention. That's how we work it. I got a couple of nice things in the in the car business, and we're going to talk about some technical stuff here in a few minutes. But I got a couple of nice things I can talk about, but go, what's going on? And they're not—I don't know if they're nice, but they're—I they're, tell you what—they're nice for some people. I mean, <laughs> Governor Colorado Governor Jared Polis this week signed into law a bill that will allow Rivian and other electric vehicle makers to sell directly to customers. The law will let manufacturers that build only electric vehicles to own, operate, or control dealerships, provided they have no franchise dealer in that state. In other words, you can't have a you can't have a, a Rivian dealer inside a Chevy dealer, and then they can all be no, you can't do that. It creates a path for Rivian and other EV startups to follow Tesla's lead and sell their electric vehicles without operating a franchise dealership network. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Lawmakers passed the bill after negotiating a compromise with dealers in the state Senate that limited the scope to electric only vehicles. We're going to take a little variation from the COVID-19 for a minute. I got some more COVID-19 that we're going to talk about on the way out the door today, but I got to talk about a little pandemic that or uh, let's call it a pandemic. Why not? In the car business, within the car business itself, and it's it's strange, and it's not, it's breakdowns, and it's it's a a breakdown of a certain system. It has nothing to do with the model. Uh, these are designed, and they all all cars 
manufacturers are using some version of this. One of their takes on it. But, I gotta tell you, it's, it's not in good shape right now. It's called Valve Timing Control Devices. Different car uh, vehicle manufacturers call it other things. It's variable valve timing, uh, uh, valve control timing, yada, yada, yada. There's, there's different names for it, but let's talk about it a minute. And I mean, I'm going to explain it to you in the simplest way I know how, because that's the only way I understand it myself. Precisely controlling the opening and closing of the valves in your, in your vehicle's engine has become the method of choice for many vehicle makers to control the engine's performance and fuel efficiency, fuel economy. It's not really a complex system. But I won't bore you with the exact way the devices work, but I will say that it's an effort to make sure the fuel delivery and the electronic timing of the spark work perfectly together with the mechanical operation now of the engine. So it's the timing is, everything is done with computer now and it's all, the old days you had a, a half a second to play with or so. No, everything is nanoseconds now. I mean, you got to be right there. You have to be, it's got to be ba-bing, ba-bing, ba-bing. And if it is, they've found by doing this that, hey, <laughs> they get better fuel economy and more power and la longer lasting engines because you get a full burn of the fuel. I, I wonder if any of you actually understand where the crud that builds up in your engine comes from. It's unburned fuel going into your gas. That's what it coagulates in there, and it's just it, with the oil, and it makes it makes for tainted oil. It turns your oil black. That's unburned fuel because your vehicles were never this fuel efficient. The more efficient you make them, the cleaner the engine's going to run. All this is to give your vehicle the power and fuel economy you need, but out of a smaller cubic inch power plant, and it works, guys. You can take a 2.0, a 2.3, a 2.7. I mean, they're they're really powerful engines. Four cylinders, uh, V6s. You know, you take a 2.7 V6, What's how big is the piston got to be? About, about the size of a dollar? A silver dollar? I don't know. That's kind of small, but hey, it works. It, I, it was first used on some of the larger vehicles with larger engines back, oh, middle 2000s to try and boost the corporate fuel economy rating with the EPA. And it was very precise. And boy, did they have trouble with it. Oh, just ask some of the people that had the, the Ford pickups with the variable vam, valve timing or the Chevys with the variable cam timing. And Chrysler had the same problem. They all had it. Everybody's had it. This whole idea, it's not the vehicle maker, it's the system. The idea was to power cars and trucks with smaller turbocharged engines so you and I don't miss that V8. Well, you're going to miss it no matter what. I miss mine, trust me, or even the V6 power that we're used to. Used to. Imagine, if you will, a large SUV, say a Ford Explorer, with a 2.0 .0 twin turbocharged horsepower. Oof. Well, it works. Car, they, they zip right along. I'm... I'm telling you, I've driven a couple of them here lately because I'm looking at some different cars to buy. And I'm telling you, <laughs> the, 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 the twin turbo, little four cylinders, they fly. They absolutely fly. Now, there's a problem, however, with some of the components and their reliability. And this is where the problem lies. These timing control devices that depending on the make of the vehicle, have a variety of names, are a combination of mechanical and electronic mechanisms. They require lubrication because they're mechanical. They require lubrication. And some engine designs don't have an adequate oil pressure or large enough oil passages to keep them working properly. In other words, they're taking the same old engine and throwing these things on it and saying, hey, should be just fine. Well, you, you barely had oil pressure enough for your old engine the way it was. Now you're throwing these cam timers on there and some turbos that got to have oil and everything else. You need to upgrade 
the circulation. You got to have some circulation, all right? You need to put a stint in your engine. <laughs> All right, somewhere communication broke down between the device maker and the engine builder there, like I just said, resulting in the failure of the solenoids and sensors. However, certain car makers seem to have plenty of lubrication for these devices, and yet they still fail. And I mean regularly. Yeah. So this whole system is a little bit suspect, especially if you have a little bit of dirt in your oil, and that's a fine pinhole that feeds the oil to this device this cam timing phaser solenoid gizmo yeah I, they, they got all kinds of names i like to call them gizmosis anyway the, the oil pressure is restricted because that little bitty piece of dirt because it made the passage too small because the oil pump doesn't put enough oil out they don't have to have that much well now you do well it turns out and this is this is the end end game here, guys. It turns out last week a class action lawsuit was filed directly directly against the manufacturers of the various valve timing control makers. Mm -hmm. Mitsubishi Electric is one, Hyams is another, Denso, and Asin Sekai. Hmm are paying out millions of dollars for defective solenoid and sensors for the parts they supplied to the car makers and the repair market. Car makers and consumers have paid for many repairs on these vehicles, guys. My, my, my shop has replaced a ton of them. A ton. You can buy them. You don't have to go to a dealer to buy this valve timing control solenoid. You can get it from a parts store. You know why? Because they got a lot of them. They're selling a lot. It's a big money maker for the aftermarket, big money maker for the dealer if you're out of warranty. But if you're not out of warranty, it's kind of a loser for them. And you know what? Dealerships don't like losers. They they don't they they want to make money on everything they do, trust me. And generally they do.